All right, this is the fourth part of the introduction to proofs. Uh, and here um, I'm going to define what a proof is, and then we're going to actually do some examples. So this is um, uh, what you really want to pay. Well, you want to pay attention to all of it, but um, the examples, I believe, will help you uh, put this all together and grasp what we're doing here. Okay, so a proof is just a series of steps that starts with a given uh, premise or premises where each step beyond the premises is derived from an earlier line in the proof by one of the valid argument forms and where the last step is the conclusion. So again, it, we have these eight valid argument forms that I've discussed in the previous um, three mini lectures. And uh, again, we went through all of those, uh, and you can refer to the uh, uh, handouts on D2L um, if you need to. So uh, what we do in a proof is we uh, cite one of the valid argument forms for each new line that we derive in our proof. Um, and every step in the proof after the premises must be justified by a rule. So each new line we add to our proof, we have to justify um, what rule that follows by. And again, the rules are just the val eight valid um, argument forms that I've discussed. Um, the other thing that we do is we cite the um, uh, we cite the lines from which uh, the current line that we're deriving um, comes from. Okay, so <clears throat> I know that's a little abstract, so what we're going to do is uh, do an example. So here is an example of uh, an argument that we're going to prove is valid. So this argument has three premises and a conclusion. Um, what the conclusion means here, um, this little terminology, this uh, dot, dot, dot is uh, just uh, therefore you can read it as a therefore. So what's to the what's to the right of this you know, uh, slash and then therefore sign is the conclusion. So this is what we're, this this H not H that's what we're trying to derive. Okay. Um, so how can we derive that? Well, here are our premises and what I have I have them labeled as such. Right. Um, our three premises and our conclusion. Right. That we write to the right. Uh, of the last premise. So this is what we're trying to derive. And so that's going to ultimately, that's going to go on the last line of our proof. Um, but here's what we have to work with. So what we need to do, what you need to do in order to learn how to do these proofs is to um, learn those argument forms such that we can use them to derive our conclusion. Now in this case we're not going to be able to just derive the conclusion in one step. Um, but what we're going to have to do is uh, look and see what rules we can apply. So um, it's always helpful if you've got like a, a simple uh, a line where you've just got an atomic statement as in uh, the second premise here. Um, we just have M. So <clears throat> uh, what immediately strikes me is uh, lines one and two. Oops. Eh. Lines one and two here, the first uh, two premises. I have a conditional statement on this line, and then on line two, I have the antecedent of the conditional statement. Now, if I know my rules, in particular, modus ponens, right? Modus ponens has that exact form, right? Conditional statement, antecedent of conditional statement, I'm, and if I have that, I'm allowed to derive the consequent of the conditional statement. So we have that, right? Here's our conditional statement. Here is the uh, antecedent of the conditional statement. And my rule tells me that if I have that much, then I can derive the consequent, which is not in. Okay? And I'm going to justify that with uh, the rule, which is modus ponens on lines 1 and 2. Um, now what can I do? Well, now I have not in. And if I look at lines three and four, then uh, I should see a modus tollens there, right? Uh, that will allow me to, if I use modus tollens and apply that to lines three and four, I can derive not H here by modus tollens on three and four. 